So if you're a casual fan of the NFL, you probably weren't paying much attention to the Las Vegas Raiders against the Denver Broncos on Sunday because, well, you've got Jimmy G and Russell Wilson. There was a lot of sloppy mistakes in it, sloppy penalties. Sean Payton started off the game with an onside kick that would not be recovered because, of course, it was touched before it traveled 10 yards. And then you've got just Josh Jacobs wasn't able to get anything going. The Broncos were loading the box. Devontae Adams was being shadowed by Patrick Sertan, who might be the best corner in football. I mean, Adams still had 60 yards on six catches, a very good game for Adams. Um, his yards route per run were in the top 20 that week for all receivers. But if you're a Raiders fan, you have to be pumped up right now because, well, multiple reasons. For one, the Raiders would not have won that game last season, right? This is a Raiders team that was horrible in one-score games. You also have Jimmy Garoppolo. I, guys, why can I not say his name today? I had to just restart this. Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo. He took multiple hits in this game, got back up. Even, the, of course, he just had surgery, guys. Gets hit and gets back up. Not to mention Jimmy scrambled and iced the game with that first down. Jacoby Myers caught two touchdowns. And then, of course, the defense for the Raiders made some key stops. Penalties is still a major issue for the Raiders. But this is a team who I said in my last video, if Jimmy stays healthy, they're going to the playoffs. They're going to win 10 games. They're going to finish second in this division. And right now, the Raiders are currently in first, but it's been one week. And I think Devontae Adams said it best after the game, had a huge smile on his face. And basically what he said was, ask me in a month, right? That's how I feel about the Raiders. Ask me in a month where they're at. But I think there's a lot to be optimistic about. Of course, playing against the Buffalo Bills next week isn't exactly ideal. The Chargers, of course, is coming up. There's some tough games for the Raiders. But if you learn anything about them, it's that, well, they can push the ball down the field. They had that 75-yard drive, and that was coming off of, of course, their defense stopping the Broncos in the red zone. So if they can just continue to improve, I think Jimmy and, of course, head coach Josh McDaniels, these guys have a lot more chemistry than Derek Carr and McDaniels ever had. I mean, clearly, this the multiple schemes Carr was never able to learn, and, of course, he ended up being benched. Well, Jimmy, he just came in and thought he played well. I thought Jimmy played incredibly well, especially on the road in a hostile environment against the Denver Broncos, who have a pretty damn good defense. And I saw enough out of the Raiders to think that I am very optimistic about this team. The schedule is very difficult for the Raiders. I mean, I believe they have the 10th hardest schedule in football, which isn't great. But the Raiders, they can check a lot of people. They've got Devontae Adams. They've got Josh Jacobs. They've got Max Crosby. Divine Diablo almost had an interception in this game. One of my bold predictions this season was that he would lead the NFL in tackles. And he's just a much better player going into the second season. I am very excited for the Raiders, and in this video, I'm going to share it with you guys, so let's dive right into it. So, let's just get this out of the way. This wasn't a pretty win. 17 to 16, I mean, Devontae Adams, this is what he had to say at the end of the game as well. He said, quote, we were just talking about that. This type of game was the difference in our season last year. So, end quote. So you can see, yes, it was not the best win, but it was a win. That's what matters. The Raiders found a way to win this game. The Raiders from last season would have found a way to lose that game. So that's for starters. But also, the Raiders, they were in a close game. They didn't lead by more than six points the entire time. They weren't able to take control because they made errors and allowed the Broncos to hang around. I mean, the Raiders committed 10 penalties for 97 yards. All six penalties committed on defense and special teams gave the Broncos automatic first downs. And then three of the four penalties that came in offense were in the red zone, which contributed to the Broncos scoring just you know, 10 points on their first three trips inside the Denver 20. So things like that need to be cleaned up. But coming off of a season where the Raiders lost nine games by one score or less, for them to show composure and resiliency, it's a huge sign that this is not the same football team from last year. I mean, early in the fourth quarter, the Raiders found themselves in danger. Moments earlier, they took over on a short field, and I did just talk about this, but I'll be a little bit more precise. So the offense, actually, I didn't talk about this, sorry. The offense had driven to the Broncos' one-yard line. So it's 13 to 10, third and goal from the six, following an illegal formation penalty. Jimmy Garoppolo, bro, okay, I deserve dislikes on this video. Jimmy Garoppolo, if I if I butcher his name one more time, I'm ending the video. Jimmy Garoppolo, he was intercepted in the end zone by Broncos safety, Kareem Jackson. Of course, that was 
deflected and it just was a play that Jimmy would like to have back. He even said it was a terrible, stupid decision in the post game. You gotta get points there, throw it away when nothing's there, but Jimmy forced it, ends up being intercepted. But the defense for the Raiders responds by forcing a Denver punt. The Raiders, they bailed out the Broncos again, however, giving them a free set of downs. That was, of course, hitting the punter, right? I was a linebacker for the Raiders, so they get a free set of downs. But the defense, it actually went ahead and forced a field goal. And if they don't force a field goal there, the Raiders lose this game. It's as simple as that. And that was the play where Diablo jumped in front of Russell Wilson, his pass attempt, and nearly came up with an interception before knocking the ball down. That was an incredible read. I think Diablo is honestly going to break out this year and become that star player that we all know he can be. And then the next play on third down, Max Crosby quickly pressured Wilson and forced him to throw the ball out of bounds. So good job by the defense. The Broncos, they kick a field goal. They go up 16 to 10. And then the biggest drive of this game, Jimmy Garoppolo go, okay, I'm ending the video. So Garoppolo, he would lead the Raiders back, completing four or five passes for 62 yards on a 79 play scoring drive, including a touchdown to Jacoby Myers to push the Raiders ahead 17 to 16. There were still more than six minutes remaining to that point. The Raiders knew the game was far from over. They blew too many leads late last season to forget that. The Raiders, they go out, they force a three and out, which was crucial, but there were still over five minutes left and the Broncos had two timeouts remaining. Josh Jacobs runs for a first down on the second play of the drive. And then several plays later, the Raiders fail to convert a third and eight, but because of an unnecessary penalty, which was a roughing, of course, they got a free set of downs. And then you have that eight yard scramble by Jimmy G. I'm calling him Jimmy G. I don't know why I can't say his name today. On third and seven, that was three plays later, ice is the game. In 2021, the Raiders, they were 7-2 and two in one-score games. They finished 10-7 and seven and made the playoffs. However, last year, they go 4-9 in one-score contests and finished 6-11, and 11, missing the playoffs. So with the Bills, the Steelers, and the Chargers next up on the schedule, it was crucial for the Raiders to pull off this win. And I did pick the Raiders to beat the Broncos on the road, which makes me feel pretty happy because they did exactly that. I mean, of course, we saw the Raiders beat the Broncos in OT last year, so it's like nothing new, but well, it wasn't an OT, but still, like we've seen them do it. But this was just the game where I feel like they do have a lot to improve on, but at least they set a strong tone for the season, right? I mean, I keep bringing it back to my Colts. Like, we end up losing to a divisional rival at home. I mean, of course, we're the Colts. Like, we're not a very good football team, and we lost to the Jags, who are. But that doesn't set the greatest tone for the rest of the season, whereas the Raiders, they, they did exactly that. They go on the road and they beat a divisional rival. So looking at Jimmy G, he just plays with poise. I mean, he helped take the 49ers to the Super Bowl in 2019, like 2021. They had a 17-7 lead as well over the Rams, and they end up losing that. And like, I don't think Jimmy's like the best quarterback, but he certainly is good enough with the talent around him and the coaching to be able to lead a team. And I see him doing that for the Raiders. I mean, when you've got Devontae Adams who might be the best receiver in the league, at least the past several seasons. I think he's been clearly the most consistent. I mean, he's just absolutely unstoppable. One-on-one, yeah, he was getting shadowed and doubled in this game by the Broncos for a reason. Talking about the Buffalo Bills game, there's three things I want you guys to pay attention to. The first one is Devontae Adams going up against Tredavious White, who only played in eight games a year ago, including the playoffs, and still managed to force eight incompletions at a 19% rate, which ranked tied for 13th at his position. Also, he's allowed a completion once every 11.6 coverage snaps and a little less than 35 yards per game in 2022, and he yielded three receptions for 13 yards on Monday night. Adams had six catches for 66 yards in week one, which is honestly a down game for Adams. That's how good he is, but 2.28 you know, yards per route run was in the top 20 among wideouts that week. So, and you're being shadowed by Patrick Sertan most of the game, you're being doubled. I mean, that's a very good game for Adams. I mean, that's the best corner in the NFL, in my opinion. So with Jacoby Myers being in concussion protocol, of course, I mean, there wasn't really much production through the air outside of Adams and uh, Jacobs and of course Myers. So Adams is going to have to ball out for the Raiders to win the game. It's as simple as that. And then Stefan Diggs on the other side, speaking of elite wide receivers, Honestly, I expect Diggs to attack, probably go after Bennett. I mean, you're not going to want him on Peters. If you're the Bills, you're probably not even going to want him in the slot. So, yeah, I, I anticipate the Bills are going to try to get 
digs on Jacorian Bennett as much as they can because Bennett didn't play the greatest in week one. I mean, four catches for 39 yards, drew a couple of penalties and coverage after getting beat. So that's probably a matchup is just to be ready for. I mean, you don't want Stephon Diggs going up against your worst corner. Like, no disrespect or anything, but I'm just being honest. And then Greg Ruzo, if I'm saying that correctly, of course, third year stud for the Bills. He's going to be working on Jermaine Illuminor which is going to be a great matchup because first of all, Ruzo is absolutely elite. I mean, he had a 90.7 PFF run defense grade in week one, which was the highest mark among any edge defender by over five points. He's also great at getting after the quarterback last season, 16.6% uh, win rate as a pass rusher, which led the Bills defensive line. It was even better than Von Miller. I mean, that was in the top 15, of course, for all edge rushers. And in terms of Illuminor, he pitched a shutout with zero pressures in week one. But he's also one of the best, honestly, pass blocking players at his position, of course, and for tackles. And against the run, he was at a 66.8, which is very respectable. I mean, that's just outside of the top 20. So if you're elite against the pass and just outside of the top 20 against the run, that's very good. So that, that's my thing for the Bills. If those three matchups that I just said go the Raiders way, they will win this game. It's as simple as that.